we got a story for you that I, I think warrants a full length episode because it, it 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 it's a very detailed story that weaves together so many of the threads that we've discussed on this show. You've got evangelical Christianity, check bizarre, idiotic, like JV level corruption <laughs> and and scamming. Always, love you've that. got um juicing search SEO. You've got a uh, swinger, hot wife, cuckold fetish stuff. Yep. You've got. You've got at fail sons. Absolutely. A, a series, a, a, like a dynasty of fail sons. You have just the, the overall trajectory of the American right wing in the era of Donald Trump. And you have the work of, honestly, probably American genius, as someone who has probably captured the moment we live in more accurately or more, more vividly than almost anyone else I can think of. I'm speaking, of course, about Danny McBride. Yes. Unironically, Danny McBride is maybe the defining artist of our time it, it like alexander payne is one because alexander payne captures the older generation the older xers and boomers the middle-aged man whose life is falling apart and he blames everyone but danny mcbride cap captures something else the fail son of multiple generations which yes. is this hyper specific moment this is the moment of the fail son of the hyper confident fail child and that is his artistic oval Whatever that word oval. is. <laughs> I'm not going to say this. Oval. I'm not going to try um, to say the French thing. It's oval now. In, in it's all shaped <laughs> like an egg. I know it's like the French word for egg. We're going to call it oval. It's the same shape. More, more and more, we're say, they, people come up to me and they say, Donald, it's the same word. We're just going to say it. Uh, the National Academy for Language just came out and said, yes, they're the same word. The president is correct. The toughest man I ever met with tears in his eyes came up to me and told me this. <laughs> so the uh, the article we're discussing is uh, Politico's big expose on Jerry Falwell Jr. and just what the fuck is going on at Liberty University and the sort of the manifold um, sin and corruption that seems to fester there. Yeah, and speaking of trajectories and currents of America, current American life, what I found out. I had thought of Liberty University as one of these weird evangelical campuses, like, you know, a fortress for Christianity. And it is. But more than that, it's a fucking online school. Yes. We, it's yeah, basically the University of Southern New Hampshire. We, we, yeah, we will get into all of this. But like w when we saw this article, it was like it, it just resonated with so much of the things that we're, we're talking about. And not only that, but you read this article and it is happening at the exact moment that Danny McBride's new series, The Righteous Gemstones, is on TV. So mild spoilers ahead for the first four <laughs> episodes of Righteous Gemstones. If you haven't seen them already, I would recommend you pause. Yeah. Do that and come back. We it really be, will give a lot of good we context will, We will be discussing uh, details from the show. Yeah. But as, as batshit and like uh, absurd in a believable way, is, which is like the hallmark of McBride's comedy... It really doesn't even come tro close to the actual Falwell family. Like oh the, my God. The, the Gemstone family, like in, you know, in case you need to, in case you haven't seen it or aren't aware of it, Danny McBride's new series, The Righteous Gemstones, is about a family of televangelists who have this kind of a, an empire of wealth based on preaching the gospel yeah. and fleecing the rubes. They, they did real good in the church business. They have an amusement park. They have a stadium cathedral. They drive around in like matching SUVs and fly on private jets. And they're all, and it's like the John Goodman is the patriarch. He's like the Jerry Falwell senior. And then you have his children who are all ludicrous <laughs> failed children. <laughs> yes. Who, who, who fuck up in many amazing and hilarious ways. None of them quite as funny as the actual Jerry Falwell. It's junior. true. It's true. This, before we get into this Jerry Falwell Jr. thing, you know, you know how we've been talking about how 2006 is back and we are planning to do a 2006 retrospective, a mega episode of sorts, but this is a very 2006 story. Oh, absolutely. This is straight out of 2006. The evangelical guy, not just, not just getting horny, but getting horny in a strange way. <laughs> Sending strange emails. <laughs> yeah, that <no>, strange <laughs> horniness was a real defining characteristic of the Bush era. Yeah. It's coming back, baby. You had you had Mark Foley. Yep. Uh, texting teenage pages to be like, "Are you horny?" And yeah. he'd be like, "Yeah," and he just replied, "Cool." Yeah. <laughs> he wrote he wrote the Anthony Weiner sexting guide. <laughs> like like his Anthony Weiner's in house style of texting girls like. 
They should call me Mayor Hard on. <laughs> straight from Mark Foley. Uh, Larry Craig, of Larry course. Craig. The wide, wide stance. stance. And the Minnesota Jeff Airport. Gannon. Jeff Gannon. The rough trade reporter. The fake yeah. newsman. A literally an invented journalist and maybe person, if you look into the Franklin <laughs> credit ring, who just... Sh- a totally hairless uh, stud who showed up in the White House press pool to ask planted questions <laughs> of like, who was the press secretary at that time? Was I don't Fle- know. Fleischer? Or, I, I, Fleischer or, I, I think it was, was it Tony Snow at the time? Tony it might have been, or, yeah. Or the, the sort of the He was there one. for briefly. And then the, 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 the tubby guy, yeah. McClellan? McClellan, yeah. yeah McClellan. Yeah. I think it may have been that his, yeah. during his tenure. Yeah. Um, all I can say about this story by... Um, Brandon Ambros- Ambrosino in Politico is a lot going on here. <laughs> yes. And this is, like I said, in Politico, someone's got to tell the freaking truth. Jerry Falwell's aides break their silence. So, like, th- there's a long article. We're going to spend the whole episode on it, but there's so many things to tease out here alongside, you know, that this is all happening parallel to the brilliant Danny McBride show. Right? So much Just so that when I read this, I honestly thought that it was some sort of brilliant viral marketing technique. Right, yeah, those HBO, you got to hand it to It's like, America. hey, you guys, some people might be saying, oh, a show about televangelists, isn't that a little 80s? Uh, no, it is not at all. It is very current. Um, but like, uh, above all of it, like, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe examining all of these, these threads and weaving them together, we can begin to get a sense of the larger phenomenon of american protestantism yes and 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 how the, the protestant faith how its arrival in in america and its evolution here on this continent sized country alongside the united states like as a nation itself yeah. has created sort of like an in- uniquely apocalyptic scenario and yeah. mindset that yes. we're now all living in yeah no we're being held hostage they've taken over control of the pilot's uh cockpit and now they're steering us into the into the field in pennsylvania okay so let's, let's let's dive into the politico reporting on liberty university and the falwell family so it begins at liberty university all anyone can talk about is jerry falwell jr just not in public when he does stupid stuff people will mention it to others they consider confidants and not keep it totally secret a trusted advisor to falwell the school's president and chancellor told me but they won't rat him out that's beginning to change Over the past year, Falwell, a prominent evangelical leader and supporter of Donald President Donald Trump, has come under increasing scrutiny. News outlets have reported on business deals by Liberty University benefiting Falwell's friends. Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, claimed that he had helped Falwell clean up racy personal photographs. (laughs) Based on scores of new interviews and documents obtained for this article, concerns about Falwell's behavior go well beyond that. And it's causing longtime loyal Liberty University officials to rapidly lose faith in him. More than two dozen current and former high ranking Liberty University officials and close associates of Falwell spoke to me or provided documents for this article, opening up for the first time at an institution so intimately associated with the Falwell family about what they've experienced and why they don't think he's the right man to lead Liberty University or serve as a figurehead in the Christian conservative movement. Okay. I'll pause there to say all those people, I'm glad they're snitching, but they're absolutely wrong. Jerry Falwell Jr. is exactly the right person to be a figurehead, not just of Liberty University, but the overall Christian conservative movement and their their submission, their their their, their fealty to uh, God Emperor Donald Trump. Yes. He should be the Protestant Pope. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, no one's more deserving. He's a shitty heir. He's completely uncharismatic. Maybe one of the most uncharismatic people Absolutely. ever. Absolutely. Just a fucking dish rag. The article gets into that. A chasm of... Cr- like, we talked about it. The video yeah. CPAC that gave me, like, I'd say a two-week-long madness. <laughs> <laughs> it was him and Matt Schlapp, right? No, it was him, Matt Schlapp, and Donald Trump Jr. And Donald Trump Jr. was the... The, the, the cool he was one. he was the geyser of charisma yeah. at, at that <laughs> just thing. going like ha, ha, hashtag yeah. me too yeah, am I right like, folks uh, yeah I'm gonna give my daughter a birthday present but if she consents to it me too <laughs> and for him that was just knocking it out of the park oh, yeah. that was like Patrice O'Neill <laughs> on, on Howard Stern like he was just killing it and then follow would just be like well i'll tell you what i uh, i'll tell ocasio cortez she want my burger she's gonna have to come get it i've got I've got daughters and they play with barbies but <laughs> assume that if she's come by here and you know, tell miss cortez she assumed my gender <laughs> that was like that was you can watch the video yourself and that is 
I actually wrote a better line for Falwell than the one he delivered. Yeah. It's like watching, it, 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 it's like if there was like a rehabilitation unit in a hospital for people who experienced traumatic brain injuries from car accidents <laughs> trying to rehab each other, like giving each other speech therapy. <laughs> it was shocking. Yeah. God makes the choice of what the babies are going to be, and God decided hey, she would be a girl. You don't have to raise them as a girl. She's just got a little baby doll right, oh, right under her, her arm story. every second. Yeah. I mean, my boys always had guns in their hands. So you, we didn't. That, that's not something. Hashtag me too. That's not something you teach them. That's something they're born with. But as far as those cows you mentioned, I've got 100 cows. You just let Alexandria Cortez show up at my house and try to take my cows away. Yes. So, I, I love cows, Jerry. They're delicious. <laughs> Can we talk about that video of Don Jr. and Jerry Falwell and like whatever other juniors were on the panel? Because I think that's the it's the most emblematic of this. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see this live. This is one of the things that we saw. Oh, I saw I I saw this when I got back yesterday and it fucking broke me for the entire. It broke me more than anything actually being there. Describe the describe the uh, the, it was like a panel on the main stage featuring Don Jr., Jerry Falwell Jr. And then two other. Right. Like Jerry Falwell Mrs. Jerry Falwell Jr. Jr. Wife Jr. and some other fucking Jr. I think is was Mercedes Schlapp there? I don't think so. It was someone who looks like Mercedes Schlapp and do. her wonderful brother, fucking Craig Plop, <laughs> and and fucking Gershon Blap. Just all the people with the most unappealing names, but well, their uh, names are onomatopoeias. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah. Sound, the sound that was made when they were born. Yeah, so balls slapping in a toilet. So water. they're all they're all on stage, and uh, Mrs. Jerry Falwell Jr. is like, and, and we're gonna have our granddaughter, and we're gonna name name her Reagan. Is that isn't that presidential? And Don Jr., they're all like, they all seem just like, they all seem like they just have been hung over in a sleeping bag for an entire day. Except Don Jr., who seems very geared up because I think that he thinks that his dad is going to watch this panel and just be <laughs> amazed by his riffing ability. And he's like, oh, 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 what if you name it Trump? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just name it Trump. <laughs> name it Trump. Like, he's so, it's almost like before he went on, uh, someone was like, "We're gonna, we're we're going to kill one randomly selected member of your family if you don't elicit a laugh from this crowd." And he's like, "Ha, no problem for me." No, like, and then one of the women starts going off on some gender stuff. She's like, "God gets to decide your gender, and we're we get this, you know, you don't get to decide. Like, we're ra- we're raising our daughter's daughter. She's gonna have dolls." And then uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. goes, my, my, "My my boys, my boys had a gun in their hand." Since they, were, since they could walk. And then Don Jr. just goes, hashtag me too. God makes the choice of what the babies are going to be. And God decided hey, she would be a girl. You don't have to raise them as a girl. She's just got a little baby doll right, oh, right under her arm story, every second. Yeah. I mean, my boys always had guns in their hands. So you, we didn't. That, that's not something. <laughs> hashtag me too. Yeah, that's not can we talk about Jerry? <laughs> Fa- Jerry Fa- <laughs> that was an amazing panel because it was the perfect. Like Jerry Falwell Sr. and Donald Trump Sr. Like obviously both huge pieces of shit but they have like some force of personality and some sort of joie de vivre where like even jerry falwell when he's like you i think the i think spiral the dragon is a transsexual like like it, like millions of people were like yes sir but jerry for all jerry falwell jr has is that name but when you put him on stage it's just like he's just a fucking lump of wet clay there is nothing going on there like his his riff on gender j- Oh uh, yeah, my son is playing with dolls. And my daughter, my daughter picked up a gun, it's a good Barbie gun. And yeah, oh, <laughs> Jesus, assume my gender. Yeah. I like to see AOC come to the come to the McDonald's and he's gonna arrest the whole place. Oh, uh, you, <laughs> uh, you just assume Donald Ronald McDonald's gender is you need a hamburger safe space. And and Don Jr. is just like, all right, all right, we're riffing. Yes, and let's go. Uh, 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 fuck it. Uh, how about how did uh, Green New Deal? <laughs> and it just it's one of the most depressing things I've ever seen. It's worse than the Little Zan podcast. There's like more. There's more like thinking on your feet in that one than this. <laughs> 
in interviews over the past eight months, they depicted how Falwell and his wife Becky consolidated power at Liberty University and how Falwell presides over a culture of self-dealing, directing university resources into projects and real estate deals in which his friends and family have stood to make personal financial gains. Among the previously unreported revelations are Falwell's decision to hire his son Trey's company <laughs> to manage a shopping center owned by the university. Okay, so I, I, this, is, this is another gem, gemstone in this that, that is right in the Chapo canon. Felix's conception of uncle and father magic. <laughs> yes, this story has partying with your uncles and dad. This is... I and, think, and a kid named Trey. I think this is like, you know, everyone talks about like Catholic tradition, like the festivals, the women just, especially in Southern Europe, just the insane weeping, almost ritualistic weeping at funerals. Although it is supposedly the woman's duty to weep. The the crying saints, the sacraments. The people in the Philippines who literally nail themselves to crosses and stuff. The Protestant equivalent is to just get buck with your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> just like, bump EDM with your uncle, wearing tank tops, being like, I can't believe we made it, uncle. I love you, nephew. That's the Protestant equivalent. It goes, uh, Falwell's advocacy for loans given by the university to his friends and Falwell's awarding university contracts to businesses owned by his friends. Quote, we're not a school, we're a real estate hedge fund, said a senior university official with inside knowledge of Liberty's finances. So they are a real university. Oh, we're, he goes, we're not educating, we're buying real estate every year and taking students' money to do it. Which is like, okay, true, but NYU does the exact same thing, but like maintains a semblance that it's a real educational institution. Yeah. It's the most expensive school in the country. And uh, guess what? They own like half of lower Manhattan. Like it is pure real estate speculation. Johns Hopkins uses their medical facilities to in debt people in the surrounding areas, and then when they get go bankrupt, they take their houses to expand uh, their fa facilities. So in in actuality, Liberty University is in, in in its shady corruption significantly less evil yes. than Johns yeah. Hopkins, oh, NYU, yeah. and that that article that came out this week about how UVA yeah. is just driving people into medical bankruptcy who use their uh, yeah. facilities. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like in my fantasy about uh, making it so America doesn't have 50 states, how gratifying it would be to for there not to be a Texan identity anymore. That would be great. I, that's moved down to second most gratifying thing in my fantasies now. Most Single most gratifying would be nationalizing every single university mm. and distributing their endowment. That yes. would be wonderful. Oh, my God. Get that rid of all that horse so shit. Good. Liberty employees detailed other instances of Falwell's behavior that they see as falling short of the standard of conduct they expect from conservative Christian leaders. From partying at nightclubs to graphically discussing his sex life with employees to electioneering that makes them uneasy, even those who fondly remember the heyday of the late Reverend Jerry Falwell Sr., the school's founder and Falwell Jr.'s father, and his moral majority. Now, th this will become this will become like a this is a big part of the plot here, but we should mention that the big inciting incident of the righteous gemstones is Danny McBride's character, Jesse Gemstone, who is the son of the patriarchal evangelical Christian leader, Eli Gemstone, played by John Goodman, gets sent a video of him and his boys at a prayer conference in a hotel room, snorting blow and partying with prostitutes. And like, you know, they're having a good old time. And then it's a blackmail plot that kicks off the show is that that Jesse is being extorted by someone who has access to a video of him and his boys partying with cocaine and uh, strippers. Yeah. So like, again, this is the, the real details of the story will are even more enticing. In January, the Wall Street Journal reported that in the run up to Trump's presidential campaign, Cohen hired John Gager, a Liberty University employee who runs a private consulting firm. This guy Gager will come back as like a, a big feature of the. Yeah, of he's sort of the like uh, he is, he's the Guccifer of Liberty University. Yeah. Uh, he hired uh, uh, Gager to manipulate online polls in Trump's favor. Not previously reported is the fact that according to a half dozen high level Liberty University sources, when Gager traveled to New York to collect payment from Cohen, he was joined by Trey Falwell. That's, again, Jerry Falwell Jr.'s son, who's also a vice president at Liberty University. During that trip, Trey posted a now-deleted photo to Instagram of around $12,000 in cash spread on a hotel bed, raising questions about his knowledge of Gager's poll rigging work. Trey did not respond to requests for, for comment. Again, another major plot point in Gemstones is that the person who is recorded the video and is blackmailing Jesse Gemstone is his own son. 
<laughs> who he's like the eldest son who he's kicked out of the house for going against his his Christian teachings. And this time he's not going against him. He's just being a complete dipshit in the family tradition. This uh, Oh my God. Like imagine these people doing Watergate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like doing a selfie with the open door. Like you don't even have to worry about putting the fucking tape on wrong. You're just like, you know, like my life, a movie. Yeah. Yo, big things coming. <laughs> like, this is literally like, this is, I mean, I guess this shows Danny McBride's strength. I was going to say you can't parody this. Only one person can. Yeah. Yeah. My I want I want to add one thing to that. I know it's in there later, but I want to say now cuz you brought it up. Yeah. Uh so he got 12 grand from from Michael Cohen to to rig these uh these polls. But the agreed upon amount had been 20,000. <laughs> he goes to New York and Michael Cohen says to him, "Well, I don't have $20,000, but here's $12,000 and match worn MMA gloves from Andre Arlovsky." <laughs> No, Which like, is such a Trump thing to do. Trump it's is, like, all right, we're not going to give you what you said. We're going to give you about half of what we told you and then some sweaty gym gear that we found in every like, single bottom so, drawer of my cl- desk. Michael Cohn was the chief of operations for Affliction. <laughs> That's MMA, true, yes. The, MMA, uh, the t-shirt company's MMA promotion. And Affliction tried to compete with the UFC in the heavyweight division. So... I don't know who those gloves are. I imagine the article doesn't say. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't say. So they could be from Fedor Emelianenko, who is at one time ranked as the best heavyweight in the world by some. So you're uh, saying it, it could have been a fair deal? No. <laughs> it's, they're still not worth the missing half of that money. <laughs> you're saying that you can't fulfill contracts with sports memorabilia? <laughs> I mean, like... You could maybe find something of equal value, but that is not of equal value. That's just horseshit. That's just, and they're probably not Fedor's gloves. Like knowing the Trump people, they were probably Tim Sylvia's gloves. So the idea is they still took the gloves and the twelve grand, and then his nitwit son Trey <laughs> Treyway Falwell. <laughs> Tra- Trey Socialists Way- can't understand me. <laughs> 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 so his, his Treyway Falwell um, takes the cash and then spreads it out in the hotel bed and posts it on clout, posts it on Instagram for clout. And he's like, I'm different. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, we out here doing corruption. <laughs> it, it, not even doing it right. Like, just totally gets fucked on this deal by the world's <laughs> dumbest lawyer. A guy who isn't even paid for his legal services. He gets completely bamboozled for. Like Michael, Co- like he just had Tim Sylvia's gloves sitting in his office, and he was like, "I've got to get rid of these." <laughs> Who's a dumber guy than me? <laughs> so it goes on here to say, members of the Liberty University community are generally reluctant to go on the record. The school uses non-disclosure agreements to prohibit many university employees or board members from openly discussing what they've seen Fallwell do. All trustees sign a confidentiality agreement that does not expire at the close of board service. Liberty University's uh, Liberty's attorney told board members in an email that was sent earlier this month after the school received inquiries from reporters on some issues outlined in this article. Tenure and its protections are not available to Liberty faculty members outside the law school. If you teach or work at Liberty, you must get approval from Falwell's office before you speak to the media. It's a dictatorship, one current high-level employee of the school said. Nobody craps at the university without Jerry's approval. Everybody is scared for their life. Everybody walks around in fear, said a current university employee who agreed to speak for this article only after purchasing a burner phone, (laughs) fearing that Falwell was monitoring their communications. This fear is not limited to Liberty's campus. Several people who lack any tie to Liberty but live in the school's hometown of Lynchburg, Virginia, refuse to go on the record for the story, fearing Falwell would take revenge upon them and their families. Okay, I'm going to set up another parallel with the gemstones. One of the first things you see in gemstones is after they return from a mission to China, they are uh, whisked back to their giant compound that includes an amusement park that they make money off of and all of the palatial McMansions that they live in. As they're driving in, I don't know if you guys remember this, one of the first things they show you in the gemstone compound is a private security team just, like, unloading clips yeah. at a firing range. <laughs> yes. So, like, they, creating this, like they, they have this, like, compound and, like, pseudo-militia. Like I said, they're like a pseudo-state within a state that is, that is based on, you know, the big business of the gospel, of mm-hmm. religion. There's another great moment in a later episode where they introduce the Walton Goggins character, and the whole fear and intimidation thing, too, 
like they literally try to like assault a rival preacher who's like there's competition among preachers and like the way they portray religion as big business yeah. is really funny. Um, there's a scene where they open up a prayer center in like a, a now like disused Sears in a mall and the Kelvin gemstone character played by Adam Devine says, uh, he's like, capitalism's crumbling everywhere, sis. That's where we move in. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like that, like all these malls are closing all over America. And then like the idea that they're all just becoming these evangelical tent poles, like they're buying up all the property and just like expanding their empire. Yeah. And the idea of like Lynchburg as a kind of company town where people literally live in fear of like, you know, the, the commandant, Jerry Falwell Jr. is a very real thing. And again, like Gemstones communicates that incredibly well with Goodman's kind of sort of like menacing patriarchal energy and, and sort of uh, feigned politeness and civility that masks a, a deep-seated sort of just greed and lust for power and, uh, and property. It is. I want to take an aside to say Goodman's performance, in a, like every performance on the show is wonderful, great perfect but goodman's is the best i would have to say it's, it is perfect menacing evangelical patriarch perfect okay so long before his may 2007 death uh by the way um rotten hell to the original <laughs> reverend jerry fall piece of senior, shit who, piece by the way everyone shit. who talks in this article speaks reverently about and they're yeah. like jerry jr is fucking it up and like jerry senior the man was a he was a giant he yeah. was a saint um, Jerry Falwell Sr., one of the most repellent malignant forces in American yeah, life, and, and without a doubt. At the end of the thing, they 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 just they lament that this great man who built this great institution is now seeing it mishandled by his shitty kid. I'm sorry, but that's the world he created on purpose. He fucking he he had a church and a university bequeathed to his kids like they were fucking Arby's franchises that he owned. He was he was instrumental in maintaining a system where of total power for people at the top who are then able to distribute it to no one else but their own circle of shitty children. That's what you get. You get Jerry Falwell Jr. in this fucking system. He got what he fucking wanted. Sorry. Not only that, but they go on in like later in the article to talk about how uh, Falwell Jr.'s, um, you know, sort of seed, seedy electioneering and political relationship with the Trump administration is sort of like untoward to their religious sensibilities. It's like, no, like Jerry Falwell Sr. created the moral majority, which created the modern insane Republican Party. Yes. Of just like just a snake pit of just fascist lunatics. Yeah. Where you don't have to after a certain point, you stop giving a shit about putting a good face on it. Just exactly. like Trump. With his two Corinthians, which he said at Liberty University, and these guys all ate it up, and Jerry Falwell Jr. These are the guys you get. It, it all it, the, eventually all of the propriety and all of the the rituals of of uh, piousness got go out the window and when you the just way, keep handing it down to your shittier and shittier kids. We uh, Brian Brian Murder Brian from Street Fight and I just recorded our first episode of our uh, Shock Jock podcast uh, podcast series. They'll be releasing in October last night. We did an episode on Opie and Anthony. And something we talked about a lot was people's reaction to celebrity and fame, right? Even marginal levels. And how the, mo the, the most psychotic and very common response to it is, I deserve everything I have in every single way. There is no luck involved. Uh, and any bad feeling, anyone else around me, they are trying to take it from me. And if everything I feel is justified and if everything I have is justified and there's no, that means there is no inequality or inequity in the world, in my life, and that I just, I have to spend my entire waking moment pointing out why I deserve it. No one else does. I have to find every fault in everything around me. And for as much fun as that is to talk about, you know, like, shock jocks in new york in a niche shock jock show that we we talked about this is the guiding ideology here for millions of people yeah. no and like that that will become more apparent but like just one last thing about the reverend jerry falwell senior <clears throat> again currently in the ninth circle of hell being tortured for eternity is that the mod I, i've mentioned this on the show before but it is something that bears repeating and something that you should keep in mind whenever you think about the modern evangelical right-wing conservative movement reverend jerry falwell senior got into politics not 
is like a, you know a, a as part of a moral reaction against uh you know increasing liberalization in American society regarding Roe v. Wade and women entering the workforce in large numbers, which desegregation, is, which is usually credited with the creation of the modern Christian right when they decided to throw off you know their aversion to worldly politics and get involved in you know campaigning and the Republican Party uh, because before that you know evangelicals were you know they were they were not a mobilized political force and things like voting was considered yeah. like rendering unto caesar right and now they they have become caesar in many ways but the motivating force for what a lot of these guys including reverend jerry falwell senior was chief among them the reason they got involved with politics was the desegregation the a ruling that created that made it the illegal to have segregated private religious schools well it uh it eliminated their federal uh subsidies okay was what it did all right. And so, yeah. they were like, fuck that. So, yeah, the, the issue that they got involved in was about desegregation. Yes, that's what actually riled them up is the idea that they would have to in, in order to keep getting federal money. Now, they, they could keep them around. It was they couldn't they could no longer segregate a school and get federal money. And that was too much. That, so not that only, they had to march on Washington for that. Yeah. No, they, again, keep in mind, arch segregationist. Yeah. And, and not like, yeah, exactly. He's not, it's not enough to, to keep the segregated religious academies. Yeah. Uh, we got to get money from the federal government, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, Reverend Jerry Falwell Sr., the Baptist preacher who founded Liberty University and whose creation of the moral majority marked the emergence of white evangelical conservatives as a national political force, made clear how he wanted the empire he'd built to be divided when the time came. His two sons, Jerry Jr. and Jonathan, had each inherited different aspects of their father's persona. For Jerry Jr., the elder of the two by four years, it was the stomach for partisan politics, ability to throw an elbow and the savvy to court influential friends. For Jonathan, it was the calling to ministry, his easy way with people and charisma as a public speaker. Jerry Jr. would preside over Liberty University, and Jonathan would lead Thomas Road Baptist Church. Each son had worked under their father at the the respective institutions. Each knew well what those positions would require. A bigger question remained, who would step into Falwell Sr.'s unique role as a national figurehead at the crossroads of evangelical Christianity and conservative politics? A man who counted presidents and senators as friends, a public figure whose outspoken statements riled critics and endeared him to conservatives, and whose endorsement carried real weight with a certain segment of voters. After the death of Falwell Sr., many within his tight-knit community expected Jonathan to pick up the mantle. A A preacher by training, Jonathan had pastoral sensitivities and a perserable nature that his brother Jerry lacked. Jonathan's a great speaker and an orator, a people person, one current top Liberty University close to the Falwell family told me. Jerry can't complete a sentence in person. He... He's nervous. It's not just him, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yes. There's nothing wrong with our boy, okay? Now, you just you really don't want him to be in charge of the entire university? He really wants to. Yeah. Oh, man. That is... And this is something, as Felix, you, you mentioned earlier, this is something that we witnessed live and in person at CPAC, his, his unique, stammering, quavering uh, public persona. Well, it is like... You know, it's a very boring thing to point to. It's a very er, hack thing to point to, but projection? Yeah. Like, isn't this just the greatest participation trophy of all time? Like, this guy literally, just person to person, can't get a word in edge. Just can't get it out. Just can't, for the life of him, cannot make a coherent sentence that grips you. It just, his verbal, his verbal energy is that of a dead slug falling down a staircase. <laughs> and they're like, no, let's put him in charge of the university. Let's put him on TV. Let's put him at CPAC to do some type of comedy panel with <laughs> the president's also shitty son. And and why? <clears throat> well, he was the guy, he really wants to do it. Yeah. He was his son. What that's what he would have wanted. And you ha- <laughs> and that's how you're immortal. The real immortality comes in the ability to to hoard obscene wealth and power and then distribute it to your shitty children for heaven is a place on earth without jews (laughs) but again in this dynamic between jerry jr the old elder one and jonathan the younger one is almost perfectly mirrored in the relationship between uh jesse gemstone danny mcbride and kelvin gemstone adam divine because like kelvin is the younger one and he's he's shit upon by all his elder siblings but like you know he's he he has the soft heart he's the youth minister yeah he wants to reach out to the teens and change people's lives whereas jesse is just a pure con artist (laughs) and shithead yeah cares about criminal like he's just a crook like entirely so it goes here 
But Jerry had a passion for politics, a talent for riling up a certain type of cultural conservative, and a spouse, Becky, who, while publicly playing the role of the quiet, supportive Baptist housewife, knew how to get her way. You know there's a head of every family, said a former university employee who worked closely with Becky Falwell for many years. But what turns the head? The neck. (laughs) <laughs> She's the neck that turns the head wherever she wants it. There is that evangelical literary tradition. <laughs> Heavy is the neck that holds the head. Yeah. That the crown. <laughs> <laughs> now I want that. Just I used to um like I've had insomnia my entire life, and I used to like I had a little shitty like ten inch TV that I'd play games on in my room when I was a kid, and sometimes like I would stay up so late I would see like evangelical programming on, and. I got very attuned to like the evangelical speech patterns and their horrible analogies, but just like just hearing it every day is great. Like you have to act like every day is a, is a job interview with God. <laughs> like holy fuck! So it goes here. Until Big Jerry died, you wouldn't have known Becky if she walked up and slapped you," said a former longtime Liberty official. Big Jerry dies, and all of a sudden, if you're walking down the hall and you didn't greet her right, you're fired. As if to underline the point, one longtime university employee shared a 2012 email in which Becky contacted four school executives at 7.06 p.m. to complain that a low-level university employee had posted a Facebook status on her personal account criticizing a lack of adequate parking on campus. Someone needs to talk to this girl. I don't think we allow employees to post negative remarks about liberty, Becky wrote to the school's officials in a message that included a screenshot of the employee's post. Shortly before 9 p.m., one senior official replied, we are attempting to call her at home right now. (laughs) The woman in question did not respond to requests for comments, but according to her Facebook profile, she is no longer an employee of Liberty University. (laughs) This is like living in the Islamic state, but with less community. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we see Becky Falwell as a real Lady Macbeth figure. And again, I'm sorry, Jesse Gemstone's wife on the show is this character to a T. Yep. Someone who uh, sort of um, is not, I guess, completely in denial about her husband's antics and infidelities, but someone who's willing to play the part of like, I just think it's the wife's duty to support her husband. Yeah. But what that really means is like she is the power behind the throne right. to support me. Like, cause if, if my husband gets outed as a philanderer and an apostate, then I, my rich lifestyle will suffer. So I'm, it's not in my interest yeah. to have any kind of honest accounting about the type of man or relationship that we have. But that is, that is the perfect symmetry of the fell son lifestyle in that you end up marrying a mom to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> this is the destiny of all fell sons of, of the fell sons of success. Yeah. So basically, it goes on to talk about how, how, how after Jerry Falwell Sr. died, uh, everyone thought Jonathan was like the obvious heir apparent to the role that Falwell Sr. played. But Jerry Jr., basically through his sharp elbows and sort of sleazy business dealings, has essentially neutralized Jonathan as any kind of force at Liberty University through, through Jerry Jr.'s control of, guess what? All of the money and all of the real estate. Yeah. Where all the real power is. So it goes... Jonathan, uh, top liberty officials say Jonathan doesn't hold any sway, spiritual or otherwise. As a general rule, uh, said a former hire, blah, 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 uh, so Falwell Sr. spoke every Wednesday in convocation all year long. His desire was that whoever was the pastor of Thomas Road would continue the tradition and speak at liberty. I think Jonathan speaks maybe a few times a year. Jerry never removed Jonathan, another top official said. He just kind of pushed him aside. Uh, when longtime confidence of the Falwell family made clear that Becky loves Jonathan, their family, after all, said one longtime <laughs> Liberty Bible. The, the phrase longtime Liberty employee is used quite a bit here. <laughs> Many feel that she worked hard to make sure that everyone knew it was her husband and not her brother-in-law who would assume the elder Falwell's mantle as a leading figurehead in the evangelical movement. Going on here, it says, Liberty University is transformed under Jerry Falwell Jr.'s leadership. When he took over as president in 2007, the school, which is a nonprofit, had listed its assets of just uh, had listed assets of just over 259 million on its then most recent IRS form 990. In its filing for the fiscal year ending in June 2017, its assets surpassed 2.5 billion. 
That number is now more than $3 billion, according to public statements Falwell made in 2018. That growth is driven largely by a vast increase in the number of online students at the school, who now number some 95,000. So Liberty University has, uh, under his reign, like... Like you said, like you said, Matt, gone from being this sort of citadel of uh, conservative Christianity, the the, the evangelical ivy, yeah, turning where they, out, the next, turning out these the students, generation yeah. of leaders to go on to compete with Harvard and Yale to like the the yeah, online it's, it's, university. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a fucking university. They're doing digital, of garden, digital yeah. gardening. It's like ta- uh, Howard is a problem. It's like they show you they show you a captcha of uh, of the Last Supper. It's like click on all of the faithful apostles. <laughs> It is, and it's a great it's a great analogy for the decline of America because what was once an awful cynical institution, but nonetheless a functioning institution that pumped out yeah the next generation of people who would do gay conversion therapy <laughs> and run these fucking disgusting Best Buy mega churches is now just a money grab, which it was before, but it's not even doing its it's not even doing stated the, the stated function. It's just yeah. raking in money. So. Many Falwell confidants are concerned with where they see that university tuition money going into university funded construction and real estate projects that enrich the Falwell family and their friends. Among these projects is a Lynchburg shopping center that is owned by Liberty University, but which members of the Falwell family have a personal stake in operating. In an email dated July 18th, 2012, Falwell informed several university executives that his son, Trey Falwell, was starting a new company to do the management of properties owned by the school, including the shopping center. Again, this is a nonprofit religious institution. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to take over this failing shopping center and turn it. It's like Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie, <laughs> but they're a religious institution technically. Yeah, that's paper. I just can't get over his his kid Trey Falwell. Trey Falwell. Would it surprise you to know that his he's Jerry Falwell the third, and that's why they call him that? They call him Trey because he's Jerry Falwell the third. Yes, incredible. Yeah, uh, it goes on. They, he talks to experts in the nonprofit field to discuss how all of these things, let's just say, raise red flags <laughs> about being able to profit off the activities of the organization. They have also taken over uh, a La Quinta Inn next to the shopping center, which is owned by a company called Comeback Inn LLC, which is registered to Chris Doyle, who manages real estate for the university. There are so many of these funny LLC names in this article. Uh, Emails obtained for the article show that on at least one occasion, university employees were asked to promote the La Quinta on the school's website, (laughs) which several current and high form ranking Liberty officials and employees described as part of a process where the school funnels business to the hotel. If only there had been a La Quinta Inn in Bethlehem. (laughs) Mary could have delivered her child in comfort, mere feet away from a whirlpool. Here's another one. The line between where the Falwell family's wealth begins and Liberty's finances end is blurry. (laughs) University officials describe Liberty loaning money to Falwell's friends, even when these loans arguably are not in the school's financial (laughs) interests. According to emails and loan documents attained for this article in 2014, the university gave loans of at least $200,000 to Prototype Tourism, LLC, (laughs) a a destination marketing company founded by Liberty graduate Josh Oppenheimer, whom Jerry Falwell Jr. described to me as a friend supporter. <laughs> According to emails I reviewed, several high-ranking Liberty officials knew about the loan, including Vice President Trey Falwell. Oh my god. Prototype Tourism is a destination tourism company that directs tourism to the town of Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> I gotta go. You gotta see it. Who's, right. going, who's going if I'm paying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other loans were precursors to massive contracts. In 2013, Robert Moon, a friend of Falwell's with deep family ties, founded Construction Management Associates Incorporated, a construction company devoted to work on and around campus. Previously unreported is the fact that Liberty gave Moon a loan of $750,000 to form the company before awarding it more than $130 million in contracts and selling it land owned by the university. That sounds all above board. Yes, totally. And very, very religious. Uh, Falwell has said, I have not personally benefited financially from CMA or any other contractor's work for Liberty University, nor has any other member of my family. In his statement, Falwell said that he and Moon are on friendly terms and have interacted socially in past years, but neither of us would list the other on their list of close friends and associates. So they're not seeing like the good Instagram stories. (laughs) Right. Just the very basic stuff like, hey... 
you know, it's July 4th. It's not seeing like, oh, here's what my toes look like today. Yeah. <laughs> I assume that's what people do on close friends and family. Well, close friends. Instagram is, stories. Close friends is either like, it's like, oh, here comes some fucking shit talk. Let's go. Or it's like, trying out this new hat today. I don't think it works with my brow line. I'm only letting my close friends see this for some reason. By the way, um, there is a setting that people like me who have above 20K followers on Instagram have where we can see literally everyone's close friends. <laughs> <story>. <laughs> there it goes here. But there is evidence to the contrary, much of it documented on the Falwell's own social media accounts. In June 2013, for instance, the year CMA was formed, Falwell shared a photo on Instagram showing him, Becky, and Trey joining Moon for a cruise down the James River on Moon's private boat. When asked about the photographs, Falwell admitted to joining Moon on his boat about five or six times. These afternoon outings did not cause me to lose my negotiation skills or abandon my fiduciary duties to enter into deals in the interests of the university, Falwell wrote. In July 2014, Falwell, Trey, and Moon traveled to Miami together. Falwell said in the statement that he recalls discussing university business on the trip. During the trip, photos were taken of Jerry and Trey Falwell partying at a Miami nightclub, photos that multiple Liberty <laughs> University officials said Jerry Falwell tried to make disappear. <laughs> so this is where the guy John Gager gets involved. This, ga this Gager, the fixer character, gets involved. This is Felix, this is, this is written totally for you. Hit me. On July 19th, 2014... Popular Swedish DJ, <laughs> popular Swedish DJ John Dahlbach performed at Wall, a nightclub in Miami Beach, Florida. That night, the club happened to have a photographer on site to gram candid shots of the revelry. The photos were shared online by World Red Eye, an outlet that documents Miami's nightlife scene, and Jerry and Trey Falwell. World Pink Eye. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry and Trey Falwell were visible in some of the pictures. The outlet identified Trey by name. In a statement on August 21st, Jerry Falwell denied the existence of any photo of him at the club. There were, you know, I have not been at the club. I am not in the club. <laughs> I, did I not was at the, the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I did not kill that club. He, he went on to say that, it, like, it, he basically said the photos, uh, if the person in the picture is me, it was likely photoshopped. In a second email sent 23 minutes later, Falwell wrote, but the bigger question, Brandon, this is the guy who wrote the article, is why would I want a picture like that taken down if I had seen it? This is, By the this way, the is flawless legal defense. <laughs> Uh, if I am in that photo, I'm not. <laughs> and, you know, and if I'm in that photo that I'm not in, that I was photoshopped in, that is just a guy who looks like me, I wouldn't care. <laughs> Flawless. By the way, since this article has come out, Politico has unearthed more photos of Jerry and Treyway at the club. <laughs> and the photographer who took the photos has like gone on record and is really pissed off at any idea that he's photoshopped these images. He's like, I of course I didn't know he was in the photo. He was like finding him as like, where's Waldo? But guess what? We have on on this fucking SD card yeah. dozens of other photos of him. And like it's him and Treyway are like Treyway is literally wearing like a glow stick. Yes, around he his is. Head, yeah. awesome. Smiling like a fucking idiot. <laughs> In response to this, Jerry Falwell Jr., I swear to God, has tried to get the FBI involved with who leaked these photos, and he has tried to get the FBI involved investigating what he has described as a coup attempt <laughs> against him at Liberty who, University. Who leaked these photos? Like, it's like that happens in every like big club. Yeah, you went to, a into a public area, you fucking <laughs> dullards. <laughs> Dumb shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait a minute. I did not know that uh, cameras were allowed into this this facility where literally every person in the room has a camera in their pocket. I am so happy that Don Jr. has a dumb friend. <laughs> look, look at this photo of, of Jerry in the club. Dude, oh, he's rolling. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than balling out in a Miami nightclub as Jerry Falwell with your dad also named Jerry Falwell. <laughs> I wish, so, I wish our grandpa was here to, to take ecstasy but still sit around with our hands in our docker pockets <laughs> like fucking assholes paying like $450 to get into a Miami nightclub. This is I mean, the look on his face. This just Jerry Falwell in the club has to be the episode art. Oh, yeah. No, it has to, to be. See this that. is yeah. the greatest. This is the Protestant. Uh, what are the Pieta? This is a Protestant. Yes. Pieta. <laughs> yes. So. Doing uncle magic at the club with your dad who has your same name and, and your young wife. Funny enough, 
But like, if, if it were just that, it would be a funny story. But the fact that uh, Liberty University has explicit rules prohibiting co-ed dancing of any kind. And alcohol. And alcohol. Yep. And you can get expelled for violating a, as a, either like a professor or... Or student yeah. for violating any aspect of this like draconian uh, honor code. Yeah, sort of a problem for the Jerry's. And yeah, for Shreyway and Jerry Just Jr. Classic. Hypocrisy. So it goes here. You love it. According to several people with direct knowledge of the situation, Falwell, the president of a conservative Christian college that frowns upon co-ed dancing, Liberty students can receive demerits if seen doing it, and prohibits alcohol use for which students can be expelled, was angry that photos of him clubbing made it up <laughs> online. To remedy the situation, multiple Liberty staffers said Falwell went to John Gager, whom they characterized as his IT guy, and asked him to downgrade the photo's prominence on Google searches. <laughs> Gager has worked for Liberty since earning his MBA from the school in 2009. In 2016, he was promoted to become the school's chief information officer about a year after he was named deputy CIO. Uh, to several university sources, his rapid rise to the C-suite was shocking. Longtime officials uh, describe Gager as a sort of fixer for Falwell, a man promoted because he would do what Falwell asked of him without complaint. But Gager is more than just a university employee. Since 2009, Gager has also run Redfinch LLC, an online business he founded that specializes in search engine marketing and does lucrative contract work for Liberty. Tax records show Liberty paid Redfinch $123,950 during 2016 for what sources described as search engine recruitment of online students for the university. <laughs> He's dealing with Howard, folks. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> what the money's going for. Uh, Redfinch's online work for the school goes beyond typical SEO marketing. In an email from August 2013 obtained for the article, Falwell asked Gager to defend him in the comment section of a local <laughs> news article that Falwell felt reflected too negatively on him. <laughs> Falwell even emailed Gager the exact wording to post. I'm having my Redfinch guys blow this up right away, Gager <laughs> responded. I'll tell you how it goes. <laughs> oh my God. This is the best type of American. The snake oil salesman who drinks his own cure. Yep. Yeah. He just promoted this dullard through his <laughs> no qualification and was like, all right, now that I got you up there, can you hack into the internet to make me look good? <laughs> he is literally a hacker for his boss. Yes. <laughs> this is just all the deep cuts, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. No one's getting... Okay. <laughs> in, in, shout out. Ah, man. In January, the Wall Street Journal reported that in 2014 <laughs> and 2015... Michael Cohen, another ding, ding. He's back another again, but genius. Michael Cohen hired Gager's side business, Redfinch LLC, to rig online polls in Donald Trump's favor while he considered a run for the presidency. Gager's work consisted of writing a computer script to repeatedly vote for Trump in two online polls. His company would get paid not twenty thousand, Matt, fifty thousand oh, in shit. return. Instead, Gager told the journal that after a meeting at Trump Tower in Manhattan. Cohen paid Gager roughly one fourth of the amount between twelve thousand and thirteen thousand dollars in cash, and gave him a boxing glove worn by a mixed martial arts deals, fighter. Deals, deals, <laughs> Wait, deals, a deals, single deals, glove, a deals, single deals, glove. Deals. So he a single downgraded boxing glove. him. Deals. He, he was, like, he, oh, he was like throwing the second glove, and it's a deal. No. <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Right. It was it was the Mr. Show change for a dollar. Yes. Yeah. But going all the way up to Trump, what if we need the other glove? <laughs> Through his lawyer, Cohen, who is serving a three-year prison sentence for tax fraud, making false statements to Congress, and violating campaign finance laws, declined a request to comment for this article. Previously unreported about the incident is that Trey joined Gager on the January 2015 trip to New York and posted a photo to Instagram showing a large amount of cash spread atop a bed in a hotel room. Liberty officials who saw the since-deleted post and described its contents said it raised questions about Trey's involvement. The idiot posted a picture of money on the bed, one current senior official said. Why do you do that if you're not involved with it? Liberty officials also pointed to a tweet sent out by the university's Twitter account on January 23rd, 2014, linking to one of the polls the Wall Street Journal reported Gager had rigged. The poll was conducted by CNBC and asked readers to vote for the top American business leaders. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Going through this insane corruption, lying to the guy who you're bribing to do it, and it's for like a poll on like what Newsmax or yes. like USA Today. Yes. That's like, 
who's the nicest TV host? <laughs> like, no one remembers this. This had zero effect. This is like a Coen Brothers movie made by Coen Brothers characters. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, whatever poll... It's about best business leaders. <laughs> like that had- I wasn't going to vote for Trump, but it says here that it, uh, Patriot Eagle dot biz that he's, <laughs> he's got the best business genes. And they said, like, even though he fucked him on the deal, he's still twelve thousand dollars for that. I don't even know who's scamming. Yeah. Who at this point. <laughs> That's the thing. It's a fucking Ouroboros of scams. Everyone's scamming each other. Everyone's got their hand in each other's yep. pocket. TM Frank Sabatka. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. All right. So it goes on for a while to outlaw, lay out the way. Which... I thought it was an actual poll. <laughs> no. Not like, no. Not, not like, a CNBC not like poll. Which, which reality host has the best relationship with his kids? <laughs> like on MSN. All right. So, so that's pretty funny. But OK, here's where it gets pretty, pretty juicy. Pretty yeah. Now saucy. we're talking. This is where it's let's, getting let's, hot. Let's get let's go. Let's go. Fall, let's tra- Fallwell's after dark. Yeah. Liberty University Knights. Michael Cohen's connection to Jerry Falwell Jr. veers into deeply personal territory. In May 2019, Reuters reported that Cohen helped Falwell contain the fallout from some racy personal photos. Later that month, Falwell took to Todd Starnes' radio show to rebut the claims. All your friends are involved. All the characters are involved in this. This is evangelical kingdom hearts. (laughs) I love this. I love this. Okay, so he rebutted the claims on Todd Starnes' radio show. Like, when you have to look for, like, the wettest simp <laughs> to give you the softest interview to cover up something deeply embarrassing yeah it's it's the piss drinking nra guy <laughs> yes uh well of course todd starnes allegedly this is a long online joke about todd starnes right, that yeah. he drinks piss, he drinks piss i don't know if todd starnes yeah. drinks piss i do know that he drinks he, sweet, that awful sweet tea, i do know that he looks like piss. he looks like a diabetic cabbage patch kid okay sweet tea is like a drink a bug would make <laughs> it sucks okay so <laughs> Falwell goes on Todd Starnes' radio show and says, This report is not inaccurate, Falwell said. There are no compromising or embarrassing photos of me. Falwell's inner, members of Falwell's inner circle took note of the phrasing. If you read how Jerry is framing his response, you can see he is being very selective, one of Falwell's confidence said. Racy photos do exist, but at least some of the photos are of his wife, Becky, as the Miami Herald confirmed in June. Longtime Liberty officials said close to Falwell told me the university president has shown or texted his male confidants, including at least in one employee who worked for him at Liberty, photos of his wife in provocative and sexual poses. At Liberty, Falwell is very, very vocal about his sex life, in the words of one Liberty official. A characterization multiple current and former university officials and employees interviewed for this story support. In a car ride about a decade ago with a senior university official who has since left Liberty, all he wanted to talk about was how he would nail his wife, how she couldn't handle his (laughs) penis size, and stuff of that sort. You know, things of that nature. Things of that nature. This former official recalled Falwell did not respond to questions about the incident. More than simply talking with employees about his wife in a sexual manner, on at least one occasion, Falwell shared a photo of his wife wearing what appeared to be a French maid costume, according to the Long Time Liberty of the Universe. By the way, just take a shot every time the phrase "Long Time Liberty Employee" or "official" <laughs> comes up in this article. Falwell intended to send the image to his and Becky's personal trainer, Ben Crosswhite, as a thank you for helping his <laughs> wife achieve her fitness goals, the employee said. In the course of texting, Falwell accidentally sent the message to several other people, <laughs> necessitating a cleanup. In a statement, Falwell denied this. I never had any picture of Becky Falwell dressed in a French maid uniform and never sent such a non-existent photo to Ben Crosswhite. Crosswhite did not respond to requests for comment. Crosswhite is another figure who comes up in this, who is Falwell's personal trainer, who has, guess what, a close relationship with Falwell and his wife, Becky, who, guess what, they've another hot young stud they've given some insane real estate deal to. The second one. The second one we've talked about before. The original story not even mentioned in this reporting was the Miami pool boy who Falwell and his wife basically just gifted a youth hostel in Miami, Florida yeah, yes. to, and run, to run for them. This guy, his personal trainer, they gave him a gymnasium that was on the property and that he was using. And then they just said, you know what? 
uh, we'll just basically uh, we will let you buy it, but we'll also give you like twenty years worth of rent in advance, so that the price is basically on not July twenty third, twenty thirteen. Liberty University began renting space to Crosswhite for use as a fitness center. The facility was specifically built into the old racket club for Jerry and Becky to train privately with Crosswhite, a longtime university official familiar with the arrangement said. Over the course of the Falwell's private training... They built... They used the m- money of the university to build a swingers dojo <laughs> where they could just get, like, loose and sweaty with their fucking personal trainers. Liberty <laughs> began to pay for expensive upgrades to the facility, according to documents... Yeah, review. swings, <laughs> uh, those cross x pet things with we the raised his cuffs. rent sum to cover the investment liberty university then sold it to ben nobody else was allowed to bid on it <laughs> in a september 2015 email liberty university vice president and chief operating officer randy smith wrote crosswhite to let him know the terms of the deal the university would sell crosswhite the club and all real estate associated with it for 1.2 million dollars Liberty employees would be allowed to use the facility. Uh, Crosswhite could decide what the value of that was, roughly $82,000 per year, he decided, and the school would pay in advance for seven years of use. <laughs> and closing, per Falwell's approval, Liberty would pay Crosswhite approximately $575,000, which effectively cut Crosswhite's total cost for the $1.2 million property in half. The net amount you would need at closing is $640,000, more or less, Smith wrote. After reviewing, if the terms are acceptable to you, then I will get a final approval from jerry to proceed smith wrote crosswhite hell of a deal a former high-ranking liberty official told me we gave ben everything he asked for uh there was really funny uh a video again that leaked on twitter i don't know if john gager and red finch llc is trying to shadow ban it <laughs> but it's a uh, Falwell, uh you know like like pushing one of those weight sleds yeah yeah, with yeah. crosswhite sitting on it and it's crosswhite holding the camera in front of him and it's like, what it looks like is a sweaty older man over his shoulder huffing and puffing <laughs> while Ben Crossway thinks, says, says things like, faster, tiger. <laughs> get it. Get it. Over and over again. A little faster. Come on. Push it. A little faster. Let's go. Come on. That Her- just, that's a real estate business team building <laughs> exercise. <laughs> okay. All right. So- Holy fuck. Fuck. So Fal- also Jerry Falwell's way too old to be doing push sleds with the body weight of like a trainer on it. He's gonna fuck up his back. So okay, we now have this whole saga about how Falwell Jr. is a I love to do my wife guy. He loves and to loves do his bragging wife. to his friends about how like my, my wife like like she can't take it, but I'm giving it out <laughs> nonetheless. Guess, and then- guess guess what? Guess what? I'm me and my wife can run out of condoms. <laughs> <It's> cool. <laughs> Cool, man. So originally when the pool boy story broke, uh, my conception of the story was like, this is obviously evangelical Christian leader, sweetheart real estate deal to a Miami pool boy. This is obviously uh, some closeted gay stuff going on here. But with the involvement of the wife, this begs the question, is this, are they are like, what's, is this, is, this is more of the, the swinger hot wife thing yes. than the traditional closeted evangelical yeah, your, guy. Your Ted Haggard thing. Yeah, yeah. the Ted Haggard so doing meth with, with uh, you know, rough trade. Yeah. So, I mean, again, like, it just brings a question, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here between Jerry, Becky, and all of these young studs that they keep <laughs> giving millions of dollars to? Uh, I mean, I mean, I, maybe he's a really good personal trainer. I'm sure he is. He's probably kind of, kind of. And that pool boy really knows how to fucking skim. <laughs> yeah, you could probably just, you can serve a meal out of that pool. Yeah. I'd imagine. <sighs> I mean, how cool is it, though, to just, like, send your employees photos of your wife dressed as a French maid? And maybe, like, when he said, like, she's not, there are no photos of Becky. There are, it is non-existent of any photos of Becky dressed as a French maid. It's just like when in, reality, when in reality she was dressed as a sexy nurse. Yeah, exactly. It came from Halloween Express. Yeah, <laughs> I love. I do love the French maid. Just the most boring, the most hackney nineteen fifties <laughs> ass fucking fantasy. Dressed as a Playboy bunny, yeah, with right. ears and shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going on vacation. My wife's gonna wear a bikini. <laughs> cool. <laughs> fucking dope, man. <laughs> So it just goes on and on about how the the athletic facility that was uh, basically gifted to Ben Crosswhite was a uh, quote a drain on the university resources that was disproportionate to his value. You mean the thing that they built just so that they could get nude with their fucking correct trainer was not financially <laughs> viable for them? 
I mean, that's the Equinox model. <laughs> yeah, but you, they let other people in. That's a good point. So, I mean, like, the piece goes, like, it, it goes on and on to talk about, like, their relationship with Michael Cohen's and the Trumps and how they, like, literally changed the graduation schedule of Liberty University so that the students could vote in local Lynchburg elections to swing it towards, you know, their they, uh, preferred conservative politicians. They got, they got a vendor to sell Trump Liberty T-shirts, which yeah, is said, completely illegal. Yeah, make it said uh, they're selling Trump merchandise through the university as a 5013C or yeah. whatever. Uh, shirts that say Liberty University, Trump. And then it says making America great one degree at a time. <laughs> Wildly uh, illegal. Just blowing the doors off and again, of your like nonprofit like, status there by doing it, that. Like the final part of the article is like talking about, yeah, all the shady nonprofit stuff like with, and their electioneering for Donald Trump. And then again, it comes back to this question, like who is scamming who? Like who's getting the most out of this relationship? Is it Donald Trump or is it Jerry Falwell Jr.? And the peace and the people surrounding him, all of these, you know, longtime associates and anonymous Liberty University officials say that like, no, Trump really isn't getting anything out of this. It's Jerry Jr. that through his connection to Trump is like recreating the role his father once had as like the approximation of like a right. political kingmaker. Yeah, because like the idea that that evangelical leaders needed to sign off on Trump for their fucking supporters to vote for him is ridiculous. He hit all the Q zones. He was going to get their vote no matter what. But he, Falwell, gets to inter, like, rent seek basically by putting himself between the followers and Trump because Trump doesn't know any better. He gets to sell himself as the guy who can like deliver them for them, even though he really doesn't have that power. It says he has the charisma of a wet sponge. So I guess really like the guy top of the totem pole here is hot young studs yes, yes. they're making out the best out of this absolutely yes. yeah they're all you gotta do it. is pipe down the hot wife for a bit and then you get a fucking uh chalet you you you, you get a functioning uh uh, uh you get you get a functioning recycling center in with the, a $3 million a year profit margin. In the ruins of the late American empire, the collapse of the American empire and the dawn of whatever the next thing is, our new John Jacob Astors, our, our new generation of great <laughs> rich men will be the young chads who <laughs> scam their initial fortune out of Jerry off of Falwell the, Jr. Off of the horny fail sons <laughs> who hold all of the capital. Yes, yeah, it's the only real redistribution we're going to get. So yeah. people need to start like blasting their fucking abs and get out there. Get on the fucking websites where you can hook up with the, your sugar daddies so, and such. The new robber barons will be the chads of today. Yes. So like they like to, to, to sort of like to to bring this all together, bring it all home. Like it gets into the question of like uh, people and like liberals especially and people in the media like the Aaron Sorkin like how dare you or like the the, the hypocrisy hounds out there will often make uh, a big deal out of like the fact that like Donald Trump is the most popular figure in evangelical America far yeah, and away He's, by like, far by far and like that they are ride or die for Donald Trump and they'd be like you know how could they do this I mean like he slipped he he paid to fuck a porn star you know yeah. like while his wife was pregnant with their child you know how can they abide this and I think it's like typical to liberals like blinkered worldview is that they don't understand that there is no hypocrisy here. Mm -hmm. There is no sin here if you are anointed. And this gets in to both the Danny McBride trilogy of TV shows and American Protestantism in general. And this is like really what I want to get at here. It's like for Falwell, there is no hypocrisy about going to a club, taking ecstasy with your son Treyway, <laughs> doing hot wife stuff, yeah. being crooked, just, just being a fucking fat fucking con artist all the time. Because guess what? You're anointed. Yep. You're doing the Lord's work. And why Righteous Gemstones is such a perfect capstone to like the, a trilogy of genius television that began with Eastbound and Down, continued with Vice Principles, and now reaches its culmination in Righteous Gemstones. This is Matt, this is something you've realized, so you brought this up, and you're 100% right, is that Danny Mc, this trilogy of shows, starting with Eastbound, are really all about American Protestantism. Yes, and that's what makes it unique. And I, I've always, I've loved all these shows, but I always thought, there's something weird about them. They're not like other comedy shows. Like I remember watching uh, Loving Eastbound and Down, but always thinking, this isn't work. This, like, this, it's always unpredictable. And the things happen don't scan with what I expect out of comedy. Like The moment that always stuck out for me is when he fucking goes to uh, do the pitch off at the dealership, knocks fucking Craig Robinson's eyeball out, and then his brother, who the whole move show has been like, you got to straighten up and fly right, Kenny just goes hell yeah and they just destroy the fucking car dealership and I was just thinking that's not how comedy works I don't get it I like it but it's weird 
And then when they, it was when they announced that the gemstones was the last show that he's doing part of the, the, like the end of the trilogy that I realized this is all because the reason it's weird is because it's Protestant comedy, which America mostly doesn't have. Most of the people who are good at comedy in America are minorities or Jews or Canadians, people with some outsider status and sense of anxiety about their place. And so comedy is about people who might be oafish and, and might be selfish, but they're always going to uh, either uh, be roiled with the uh, discomfort of knowing that they're fucking up or will be punished by the world for fucking up. But the, in, like if Danny, Larry David, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's so the like, opposite of that here because Larry David is like a McBride character and that he's never wrong, but he's always punished in this, in the McBride universe. These guys are completely self-centered, monstrous ego pieces of shit, nothing but avarice and desire. Uh, and then they go out into the world and it, bends to their will they never feel bad about anything they never repent on anything and they are rewarded by the world and that's not how most american comedy works and so it's it's like that's what makes it different but that's what makes it so perfect because it's an emblem it's not made by by american protestants and it represents a protestant view of the world because you're never wrong you're never you you might be you might sin but you will always be redeemed by god and that's what matters it doesn't matter what any of these assholes around you think about it and being even if you are wrong temporarily you were meant to do so because it was it was a necessary detour on your way to being even more right exactly yes and so these shows it's like these guys they should be owned why are they not getting owned because they they live in the protestant world all of the danny mcbride characters beginning with kenny powers neil gamby and now jesse gemstone the thing that unites all of them is not just that they, their you know, bone deep knowledge that they are always right and everything they do is correct. It is beyond that. It is that not only that there is nothing that they can do, no fuck up they can imagine or, or conceive of or pull off that they won't be forgived for mm-hmm. and get away with. Yep. And the thing is, the outside universe confirms that yes. it's not just that they believe that they'll get away with it they or that do. there's nothing that they can't be forgiven for over and over again no matter how awful they are think of the, the unbelievably awful things kenny powers does in that show he's forgiven and rewarded for all of it yep and look at jerry fucking falwell jr do you think this is gonna change anything he got that he got that university from his daddy and he's gonna pass it to his shitty kid Try and there's away. gonna be no punishment so why would you think that god would bless you there's a there's one awesome uh bit in uh one of the i think second or third gemstone episodes where jesse gemstone is praying to god uh and he's part of like he starts off by saying good afternoon jesus which is very funny and then he says thank you for uh Thank you for forgiving me for my sins, which you know are not who I am. Just like, <laughs> yeah. like there's, you know, there's me and then there's what I do. And they actually don't have anything to yes. do with each other because God knows that. That is there's the perfect a, distillation. No, there is another the modern Protestant. There's another absolutely perfect moment that sums up just the McBride characters and the, the, the Falwell, all of this. There's a scene in Gemstones where he's like bracing one of his flunkies who he suspects of betraying him. And like he holds him down and threatens him with a knife. And he's like, that's not cool, man. And then like he gets over it and he's like, all right, all right, everybody, forget about that. Evan's cool again. He's like, don't worry, Evan. I forgive you for my suspicions of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why you make me do that? But in a world ruled by Jerry Falwell and Donald Trump, why would you not think that's you've made the world work that way? It's like you did t- you did the secret. Pro- American Protestants came over here. They had the big blank cabins of America to work for in their mind, and they just did it. They, they, the teamwork made the dream work, and now they have a world that's just made up by their minds every day, and, and that and that bends to their will. And like, a, thanks a, to capital. You know, uh, I'll, I'll get, let's get a little bit, a little bit controversial, a little bit saucy here. Like American Protestantism, or like particularly of the evangelical variety, like as it's evolved in this country alongside capitalism, yeah, is like almost not Christianity, or like I wouldn't even say almost. It's just no, like, it almost, like a pagan it's, religion. It's a, kind it's of. a splitter off of and Christianity. Like, what, like but when, 100%. They, when they think about like when when they talk about God, what they're really talking with these people, like the Falwell people, people who love Trump and will never abandon him, no matter what he does or says. What they what like what God and Jesus Christ is America, and America yep. is capitalism yep it's making money it's having a big ass military it's kicking ass it's the flag that is it's that the is mansion what, it's your patio and that the, and that your the comfort and luxury that you live in are all evidence yeah. of how right you are yep right 
Dolan has always said like American Protestantism is worshiping America or America personalized as God. Yeah. But I, I take it maybe a little step further that, um, in the, uh, good part of the Bible, the first part, uh, <laughs> there's the one form of God, Yahweh, more personalized God who speaks directly to David, most notably grants some military victories. He's a very conceivable God. And then there's Elohim, the ghostly God who never speaks directly to people, always appears through his works, always appears through his miracles or metaphorical appearances. And, you know, typically appears in stories of struggle and things like that. But the Protestants have created both. Whenever something good happens, it's Yahweh. It's, it's he has told me. He has told me to invade Iraq. He has told me, I'm, I'm not this pool boy thing. I'm not this. I'm not that. I, he has told me that I will succeed. He has engineered, directly engineered my success, but it's also me. Elohim is, in my times of tribulation, in my worst moments, in my downfalls, in my moments of doubt, that is, that's when God is, he also wants me there. He's there with me, proving that I don't really have to change that much. <laughs> He's guiding me. I can't be wrong because Elohim is right there with me. Prefer- they get to have it. They get to have it both ways, and the Protestant Transubstantiation is beautiful. And perversely, the only people that aren't forgiven in all of this, and like if you, if you, again, if you don't believe any of this, look at how George W. Bush has been rehabbed in American culture. Mm-hmm. Like with the Iraq War, it's like it never happened, yeah. or it's just like oh, like that's yeah, like Felix said, that's not me. We all make like we make mistakes. Yeah, you know, like all my struggles is lessons. Yeah, I'm better now. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm st- I still love God. Yeah. He still loves me. Mm-hmm. The only people who are not forgiven are the weak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if they were, it's, it's for the, pe- it's for the people better, who are, who don't have anything, who are poor, yeah. who suffer. Who, who, and then like, then w- when you, when you're confronted with that, like, guess what? It's your own fucking fault. Yeah. You're losers. You made, made better choices. Loser. Yeah. Did you yeah. try talking to God? Dumbass. Yeah. 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 And it's like, if God favored you, he would have shown it by now. You're you're a loser, folks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Like John Calvin had the exact same belief system, but Calvin was a lawyer and he was a product that he went through great lengths to try to obfuscate how monstrous this ideology was. And there was also in the early Calvinists, there was the it the uncertainty because there was this thing of like, yeah, I, there are fruits that we can kind of l- look at, but they're not sure. We might we, none of us know for sure where we're going, and that kind of anxiety yeah. is built into right. it. But over time, you know, enough plenty just wipes that out. And it's like, yeah, no, I, I'm definitely, I mean, there's, cause like how, how favored could you be? Everyone was shitting in a bucket. Now there's such a, because of plenty of capitalism and, uh, and the, the bountiful bounty of the continent, there's so much shit to have that, that God's favor can become very clear when you've got like, you know, the, the, the in-ground pool and stuff. It's like, I can, I'm pretty sure that God right. picked me. And, and the, one of the original guiding premises of Protestantism that, there should be as little authority between you and God as possible yeah. that you can talk directly to him. It sounds like a great idea. It is a great idea theologically just on its surface, but when you actually get into what it is in practice now, it is. it does justify every yeah. bad thing that right, happens to everyone else because it's like, you can talk to the same guy I talk yeah, idiot. to. What are you saying to him, dumbass? Yeah. I will say this about the Dreyshus Gemstones. It's a great show and it's incredibly realistic and as we're seeing, it's uncanny how it maps on to these people. But because it is filled with genuinely talented, charismatic actors like Danny McBride and uh, and uh, John, John Goodman, Goodman and yeah. stuff, then it, it's literally impossible for them to portray the level of just inert, slug, charisma-free uh, dullness of a guy like Jerry Falwell Jr. You you can't do it. They're just too. They have a spark, so they could not portray someone that dull and flat and gray and that is a big part of it the fact that such a nothing has this position is also a big deal and a big component of the sickness at the heart of it that is it it, to wrap it up i guess that is the most disaffecting thing to me you know how we're always saying nothing ever changes except it gets worse yeah it is we have the same uh televangelist shitheads as we did in the 80s but at least they were showmen. Goddamn right, man. Can't fucking say Jimmy, that about Jerry Jimmy Jr. Jimmy Swagger weeping. Yeah. I have sinned. Can you imagine that fucking just 
Jim, Be- Baker, Jim, Jim Baker still got Jim it. Baker. Jim, Jim Baker still Jim got Baker it. Jim Baker does still have it. Yeah. But can yeah. you imagine just, just yeah. like just this fucking like beard covering a no chin motherfucker trying to like summon some tears for that kind of speech? Impossible. All right. Well, again, I think that uh, does it for the episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, this tale of uh, American lust, greed, and uh, and God. Yes. And if you are a a, a good Protestant, if you feel like we're misrepresenting uh, the theology, please send all complaining emails to Virgil Tanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're one of those Norwegian Protestants who doesn't do any of this, just sort of feels bad all the time, uh, I'm de- de- declaring you're Jewish. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> all right. God bless, everybody. God bless. God bless. God bless. Bye. That's not good,